Hello, hi, welcome back to my course on enhancing soft skills and personality. This is week 8, the last week, second unit, lesson number 37. In this unit and in this lesson, let us focus on business etiquette. And before I start, as usual, let us take a quick look at what I did in the last lesson, highlights of the last lesson. We learnt and understood the meanings of values, ethics, etiquette and the relation to personality. What are values? Values are principles or standards of behavior often manifested in one's judgment of what is important in life. It is indicated by the way one deals with people and how one prioritizes commitments and responsibilities. The way one takes care of his or her commitments will reveal the person's innermost values. Etiquette or norms or rules or governing principles which are socially acceptable behavior, ethics or moral principles that govern a person's behavior and the way he or she treats human rights, how the person respects the rights of the other one, not only with regard to human rights, not only with regard to individual relationships, but also how the person respects the natural environment. Professional ethics encompasses the organizational and personal standards of behavior a professional individual is expected to possess. Here I cautioned you by saying that it is rather tricky because there are in-house norms. So, when you go for something like medical profession, there are written rules, guided norms. When you become a lawyer, there are written rules. But then the society has some expectations which are uh, endowed on the individual as a kind of moral responsibility and you are expected to adhere to those moral responsibilities. So, in that context I said a teacher cannot escape clearing doubt any time when the uh, student is asking the teacher, it's not saying that it is uh, uh, beyond classroom hours, so I will not be able to answer your doubt. And same thing goes with the doctor, if the doctor refuses to take care of the patient especially without asking for uh, payment in uh, advance. So, then uh, the society rather feels uh, uh, very unhappy with the doctor. They feel that it is the responsibility of the doctor to treat the patient first and think about money or anything later. So, that is professional ethics. Whereas, if a business person refuses to give loan, so people will not feel that bad and thinking that oh, that is part of his profession. So, professional ethics, although one learns the uh, in-house norms, it is also important to know what are the moral responsibilities which are associated with that. That if you are able to follow will make you a real professional. And a person with high ethical values and good etiquette will be able to create an everlasting impression on the people he or she comes across. Such qualities like being friendly, helpful, charming, dignified, decent, affectionate and lovable are the ones one should build, develop in order to have a very good personality. And then the question like uh, why should I change? The society is uh, so bad and the people around me are so corrupt. To that I said that individuals are the ones who are making the society and if an individual can change, you will be able to make great change in society. And I ended the lesson by listing some of the examples of poor etiquette such as spitting in the public, smoking in the public, not giving seats to uh, those which are designated actually for ladies or uh, uh, disabled people or elderly people. So, that uh, also amounts to civic sense one needs to develop. In this lesson, as I said, we will focus particularly on business etiquette because today these are the norms which will govern and control the way you are performing your duties in any uh, area of profession that you choose to be. So, business etiquette refer to those mannerisms a professional is expected to follow in business as well as social situations. This means 
you expect for example, a lawyer or a teacher or a doctor or an engineer to behave in a certain manner in the business area as well as even outside the social uh, groups. So, you cannot uh, expect that uh, a teacher will behave in a different manner in a social uh, function. So, one expects a level of decorum, dignity which are associated with this uh, professions business. Now, adhering to some of the norms that I am going to discuss with you will help you to develop a professional image in business and social circles. First, either in a business group or in a social circle, when you are going there with a partner, a friend or your wife or a husband, you need to introduce the person who is accompanying you first to the one whom you know already, but the person who is with you does not know. So, it is rude and uncouth, uncouth is totally uncivilized to keep your partner unintroduced while you indulge in deep conversation. You are enjoying uh, good laughter with the other person, but the person who accompanied you is not being introduced. So, it is also unfair to your partner who will feel left out and they will not be able to participate in the discussion wholeheartedly. So, it is important you should introduce first and in case uh, you are introducing somebody of the opposite sex, then you have to introduce the lady first. Okay. So, if there are two men and you are with one woman and it is important that you introduce the woman first to the men and then the uh, one of the other uh, uh, pair, the two men will be introduced to the lady either by you or by the other person accompanying this uh, group of uh, men. Then the next important thing which I hinted in the previous lecture about the language that you used, you should use the lingua franca that is the common language that is used whether it is official or commonly accepted. So, in most cases it is English or in uh, uh, most of the other uh, cases it is Hindi. And depending on the area, the region, sometimes the local languages are accepted, but speak in a language that is known to all the people who are in the group. You cannot choose to speak in a language that is known only to two people or three people. That is again impolite, that is not part of good mannerism. In large groups, when you are sitting or when you are talking, address all in the sense that when you say something, so share it with the entire group. Do not indulge in small chat with the person sitting next to you. This happens uh, often because of introverted tendencies, often because of your own unfamiliarity with other people, but these occasions when you are in a social group are the ones in which you need to become familiar with other people. So, instead of again and again catering to your introverted tendencies, it is important you come out of your shell, mingle with the people in the group, not focusing on one or two individuals who are sitting next to you or identifying somebody who is as introverted as you and then focusing only on with this person. The other thing is with regard to your facial expression, particularly I have been telling you that eye contact is important, you need to maintain that, but apart from that, you should not chew gum or eat something while everybody is involved in some serious discussion. So, again it is very rude and it is not uh, part of the etiquette. And when somebody is giving a talk, when the speaker is just in a flow, do not interrupt the speaker. And if you need to interrupt, maybe you really need to understand what the person is saying. So, then you seek permission, you take permission before uh, interrupting. You can say, may I interrupt you for a minute? So, can I seek this clarification at this stage? If the person says no, I will come back to this, then allow the person to continue. You have no right to interrupt. Even if you are the boss or even if you are at a dominating position, you should not do that. And in discussion, suppose it is a group discussion or a brainstorming session, do not monopolize the discussion do not try to seek the center stage that everybody should listen to you, do not become egoistic and egotistical. 
if you are a good leader, you should be a facilitator. So, you should give chance to all, especially you should motivate those silent people who are rather shy and introverted and then you should make them come out of their shell and make them say something. So, if you can say something like, let us uh, listen to our friend who is uh, uh, keeping quiet throughout this uh, discussion and maybe he or she has a wonderful idea, why not we hear from her. So, that will actually make the person smile or feel motivated to share something and most of these times these silent people, quiet observers are the ones who have very interesting ideas. If invited for a business meeting, if an invitation is sent and you choose not to attend it, you need to inform in advance. So, you have to thank them that you are attending it. You should also say thank you for the invitation and say sorry that you could not attend it. So, ignoring it and not saying anything is unbecoming of a professional. And in case in these discussions, there are uh, discussions on politics or religion or things related to gender or any sensitive issues, avoid taking sides. So, do not try to take sides. Okay, so, this is uh, becoming unprofessional and then you will immediately be uh, grouped with some people with vested interest or bias, so which is uh, not required in a business environment. The most important thing, refuse to do anything unethical, even if your higher authorities persuade you to do so. Example, if you are the teacher and the principal is telling you to give more marks and pass a candidate. Now, you have every right to protect your integrity and say no. It is difficult to refuse initially, but once you do it, in the long run, even your higher authorities will respect you for your integrity. These things are set at the beginning when you join a profession and they test you, your integrity. And sometimes people fall very naively to these uh, traps and then they start uh, giving more marks in the case of a teacher and pass a student and then it becomes an expected norm. Every time the principal will call and tell you to change the marks and do that. But once you refuse, despite any pressure or any kind of uh, blackmailing, if you say no with dignity, with assertiveness and then they will realize that, okay, here is a person who is very integrated, honest and it would not be possible to change this uh, person and then next time there would not be such requests. So, it is important to set this integrity level as you join a new profession. And the next important thing, once you have joined and once you have gained some trust, you will be in such a position where confidential matters will be discussed and you will be in confidential discussions. Now, do not share any confidential matter with others, including your most trusted friend or most trusted wife, beloved husband, boy or uh, uh, girlfriend. So, thinking that you are sharing inadvertently even if they say this or give hint to someone, your job is in jeopardy more than that your integrity is doubted and credibility goes down and that is undesirable and uh, this is part of developing your business etiquette. The next important thing, do not say bad things about your company, your boss even when you are drunk. So, people think that uh, they can take liquor and uh, they can always excuse by saying that I was under alcoholic drinks, so I uh, forgot what I was saying and I abused my boss or the company. The other excuse is even when you have left the company, so they have left and joined somewhere, then also do not say bad things about that company, that boss. Good that you left and you think you are in a better place, just be there and give your best. Now, saying bad things about the company, about the boss is not going to make that boss or that company really bad, but it will reveal a bad aspect of you to others. People will know you have served there for 10 years, 20 years and then now you can say very bad things about that company and the boss 
and any number of years you are going to serve in the present one, what is the guarantee that you will not abuse this uh, organization later? So, that doubt in your integrity will start from the beginning. So, do not do that. And the next important thing in terms of developing your business etiquette, share your personal details to the minimum required, especially if you are uh, not married or married and uh, like you are not in uh, good relationship with your spouse, it is a strained relationship. Now, these are things like you can share to the minimum, but not very intimate details. Sharing intimate details can often cause embarrassment and humiliation, because the person whom you trusted will keep those details, will make it public, will share it with everyone and everyone, uh, some embarrassing detail of yours can become the talk of the town and you can be laughed behind you and you can see that sarcastic smile uh, from people. So, you lose your dignity, but more than that sometimes intimate details can be used to emotionally blackmail you and make you reveal company secrets or some confidential information that is known only to you. So, why risk uh, this kind of uh, going down in terms of your dignity? So, keep your personal details to the minimum. While talking, while giving a talk, while giving your answer, response, do not beat around the bush. That means, do not try to come to a point in a very circular, rambling, meandering manner. Talk to the point. So, time is money in business and they will value you as long as you can save their time. For the same reason, do not be ambiguous. When you are ambiguous, you try to give more than one meaning. So, do not be ambiguous, be clear, lucid and precise in communication. So, it is worth going to our initial uh, discussions on communication skills in the previous course. In case you want to know more about how you can become precise and lucid. So, so many tips have been given there. So, that uh, is important in terms of communication not being ambiguous and but being very clear and uh, transparent. Be courteous, polite and respectful all the time. It is not only uh, inside the office you will be like that, outside when you meet someone you do not even recognize the person and behave like a stranger. No, keep smiling, exhibit cheerfulness again all the time. Use frequently these lubricants, these uh, polite words, sorry, please and thank you. These are the magical words that can fetch you anything that you want. Always request even if you are in a demanding position. So, do not go and then demand something, demand put pressure on somebody to do something. Always use uh, polite phrases like, may I request you to do this, can you do this for me? Okay. So, that actually will make the people feel obliged to do, rather than resisting your uh, demand or command. And when you see people, especially while meeting in uh, uh, day to day walk, somewhere in the corridor, first meeting. So, just greet them. So, simple thing like wishing them and if they are your colleagues and of same age group and if it is an informal setting, you can say good morning by adding the name. So, good morning Arjun. Whereas, if it is senior and then it is a formal environment. So, then you should say good morning sir or good morning ma'am. And Whenever you meet, if it is afternoon, good afternoon or evening, good evening and then if the discussion is slightly prolonged and you can end by saying have a nice day okay, and so on. So, that greeting also is uh, making the conversation go smooth and it is also making the other person feel comfortable with you. However, avoid intimate relationships with anyone in the office. This is something that I insisted on. Uh, the discussion with regard to managing love. So, I discussed enough about this there, but just as a caution, avoid this uh, intimate relationships in anyone in the office, be it your boss, because 
uh, it is easy to develop intimate relationship with the boss and gain lot of favours, but then people behind you, you never know what they are talking about you. Okay. And again in terms of integrity, moral values, ethics, etiquette, you go down. And same thing if you are at a higher position and you maintain relationship, intimate relationship with your subordinate. So, that is also not uh, appreciated and rather people look down upon such relationships. So, it is important that you should avoid uh, these ones. Then this is something that I hinted in the previous one, do not barge in without an appointment. You should not uh, do such things. And if you have an appointment, reach the place before time and report to the receptionist or the secretary or the personal assistant. Instead of sitting and reading a newspaper or uh, assuming that uh, the concerned person will know that you have reached, it is important you should tell them. If you are the person who has given appointment and uh, guests are uh, waiting, do not keep the guests waiting if you have given an appointment. And in case you kept them waiting, you have to appreciate their patience in terms of waiting. You need to apologize and then uh, if possible, you can send some cool drinks or coffee or something, so that they do not feel the boredom of waiting and then they do not feel annoyed that you kept them waiting and keep them in waiting only if it is inevitable. Otherwise, you should be there before time and you should uh, keep your appointment in time. And at the end of the meeting, in certain cases at the beginning of the meeting, remember to give your business card and when you give normally, mutually, the other person will also respond to the gesture and other person will also give you the card. But in case the other person is hesitating to give, especially a lady for example, a new person, she may be hesitating where her mobile number is there or somebody who is so busy uh, and may be a celebrity than you and is hesitating, do not insist on business card from those people. Okay. So, it is their right to decide to give or not to give, but from your side whenever uh, you are beginning or ending, whenever there is an opportune time. So, just give the card, share it with the others and keep the cards ready. Last but not the least, two important uh, tips which will uh, make you the ultimate uh, business uh, person. Use win-win approach in conversations. So, in all debates, do not seek to generate heat, but throw light. So, use this method, you are right, but I am not wrong. How do you explain? So, you will slowly say you are right to the extent, I agree with you to the extent where you discussed about this and to that extent, maybe here I am slightly incorrect, but I am not completely wrong in saying this. So, this makes the conversation reach this win-win level and then as has been discussed before uh, in terms of uh, being assertive, always be assertive and never be aggressive. Aggressiveness only indicates your inferior feeling, your own inner insecurity. Assertiveness indicates your uh, calmness of mind and your surety, confidence. So, be assertive. And the last tip is prize your employees or colleagues in public before others and seek every moment to price them. Whenever it is possible, try to price them in public and acknowledge their work, make it known to all. But if you have to criticize and you found some fault in their jobs, do not shout at them, share it with others in public. Do not reprimand them in public. If at all you have to reprimand, call them privately in your office, in some chamber, some outside while having some coffee, okay, where the person is comfortable and the person is able to receive in the right frame of mind, especially if you want the person to change a particular behavior. You need to make the person know that it is the behavior that you want the person to change and you are not against the person as a human being as such. Now, to make it clear 
So, you should not reprimand the person before others. When you criticize someone before others, normally the other person will resist, okay. they will become defensive because they do not want to feel humiliated before others. And to the extent, some people can even become offensive and they can reveal your own faults and they can try to put you to shame, so that this uh, is equated, it is a kind of tit for tat. But on the other hand, even if you are good, even if you are integrated and even if they are completely at fault, do not try to criticize them in public. Okay. So, that is not part of business etiquette and it is not going to serve any good purpose. Now, towards conclusion, you might be wondering, is it possible for me to develop uh, these rights in me? And this is something that we have been discussing from the beginning of uh, the course, where I have been telling you that these are not something that is uh, inborn rights and these are characteristics, qualities which can be developed and enhanced. So, let us look at two interesting quotes from two eminent people about acquiring good manners, that is all about etiquette. The first one from Benjamin Disraeli, who says, cleanliness and order are not matters of instinct, it means things related to showing you as neat and orderly, okay, like a thorough professional in terms of meticulousness to detail, following time etcetera or not matters of instinct. He says, it is not coming from within, it is not coming by birth, by hereditary, they are matters of education. Maybe the parents taught you well, maybe the teachers taught you well, maybe yourself imbibed these qualities from good cultured people around you. And like most great things, you must cultivate a taste for them. What Benjamin Disraeli says, even in case you have not learnt them, you can learn through education that is not only from books, but by observing others. And not only that, you should not stop, you must cultivate a taste for them. You should look at those people who have already developed, already have refined taste, refined qualities and try to learn from them, try to emulate them. There is no harm in imitating good qualities from others and appreciate good things from others, that is good for you. And the next famous quote is from George Bernard Shaw, famous playwright. He says, there is no accomplishment so easy to acquire as politeness and none more profitable. So, for him all the things in terms of uh, ethics, etiquette, mannerisms, he puts in the single word politeness. He says, there is no accomplishment, nothing you can achieve in this world, so easy to acquire as politeness. So, acquiring this is not difficult, being polite and none more profitable. So, it is easy, but at the same time, it is the most profitable one by being polite. I always remember uh, how politeness has helped me in various critical situations. I remember uh, uh, during my uh, student days and uh, uh, a very uh, meticulous professor and uh, uh, deadlines are rigid and once he gives the assignment, we have to submit on that day in particular. So, due to some inevitable circumstance, I uh, could not uh, finalize the time that he has given, but if I rush through, I will be able to give, but it will be a slightly substandard product as uh, to my expectations. So, I took courage, I went to him, although everybody was afraid of asking him. At the end of the class, he was uh, uh, just uh, arranging his uh, teaching material. So, I interrupted, sought permission to ask him something, then he said fine, go ahead. Then very politely I asked him, whether there is a possibility of uh, submitting this by taking one more day, because it will help me to improve the quality of the assignment. As such, I can submit, but I will not be able to submit one with high quality. So, the teacher immediately said that, I should normally say no to this, but the way you ask me 
is something that I want to appreciate. So, for that sake, I am just giving you one more day. It is not uh, my uh, intelligence that won the day, but it was my politeness in which I approached him. So, that was the time I realized that this uh, uh, inculcating soft skills and then implementing them at the right time can save us from many troubles and can make us run life in a very smooth manner. Uh, if you want to slightly know more details about this in terms of business etiquette, one interesting book that I found is from Ali Chu, Business Etiquette, An Essential Guide for Executives. It is published by Times Books and uh, about uh, the year 1992. So, if you can get this and if you want to know more details about including body language, how you should uh, eat uh, in dining tables, uh, how you should follow this uh, table mannerisms and etiquette, which already in terms of body language we have discussed before, but in case you need to know more uh, in details. Thank you again for uh, watching this video, we are almost nearing the completion of the course and uh, these two units will uh, help you to establish you as a thorough professional, as a good gentleman and then develop your uh, professional skills along with this uh, etiquette. Wish you success in whatever profession that uh, you have chosen, whatever uh, business that you will uh, settle as well as uh, success in uh, social life. So, have a nice day. Thanks again.